All right, now that we know what logical equivalencies are, this idea of having one compound proposition being logically the same as a second compound proposition and what it means is to show that the biconditional is a tautology. One of the things that we have is we would have a bunch of logical equivalencies to know. And where this kind of gets into an issue for most students is you can imagine, say, an elementary algebra. You've essentially did, if you're an American, you know, gone through the American education system, you know, in eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, you've been introduced to elementary algebra. You've had elementary algebra one in high school. You've had elementary algebra two in high school. You can do college algebra in the university, which is four plus years of nothing but elementary algebra and versions of it. And all of those are based upon laws. And so you do all of this stuff. So you could do things like, you know, two times x plus three is equal to four. And we ask how to solve that. And you distribute the two and get two x plus six is equal to four, etc. And what you've done is you've just used laws. You've used the distributive law that tells you that, oh, when I have an A and a B plus C, this becomes A, B plus A, C, and these are the same. So what you really did is replace something with a same that is actually useful. We have a goal in the end that we learn what to replace with by pattern, and we learn tools, and these tools are all of these laws to go ahead and replace things with the same. And so we've done things like, uh, you know, 3 plus 0 is still 3. Why? Because uh, I can replace 3 plus 0 with 3 because the plus 0 does nothing. It's the identity law of addition. And you've spent five years, six years, however many year long, of learning how to use those laws to do replacements and for applications, but you know what the laws are. In a way, it's kind of bad luck. I don't know it's that bad luck, but it's a good thing for you in a way. <laughs> that we are going to have these laws of propositional uh, equivalencies where, where we will replace things with the same or understanding what the sames are, where we have goals where you would do something like, say, you know, x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, and that's x plus 2 times x minus 2. We might use the word factoring, but really factoring is distribution, right? We take that x, x, x squared, and we get the negative four, and we get a negative two x and a two x. We, what you call factoring is really distribution, right? It's just remember that these things go two directions because they're the same and sames are commutative. So if you go one way, you can go the other way. So we are going to do the exact same topic or concepts that we've done before in elementary algebra and we're going to do it with logic. And now we have new operators. We have ands, ors, ors, exclusive or, implies, biconditionals, negations. And so we're going to have all these sorts of features that we've done before, and we're going to learn to use them again. Again, for all of these, we could show that either by a, t a truth table or we could use a discussion. So we would do problems of this nature. So if I would say, show that these are logically equivalent, I would have P, which is either true or false. A truth, which is always true. What's P and true? Well, true and true is true. False and true is false. So what is P and true? Biconditional with P. True, true, false, false, both of those. Hey, look, it's a tautology. So because this is a tautology, the biconditional is a tautology, that means that they're logically equivalent. So I showed this by using a truth table. And you can do that with all these, or you can do it by discussion. Now, again, identities. What's the idea of an identity? It's a do-nothing. So I notice that if I and a true, so true is conjunctions do nothing. So if you say something and, you follow it up with a tautology. So if I say my name is Mark and 1 plus 1 equals 2, who cares? You said and 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's a tautology. You can just drop it off and just leave out my name is Mark. You've really done nothing. And so that is conjunctives do nothing. That's conjunctions identity. Disjunctions do nothing is the or false. So I can say things like my name is Mark or 1 plus 1 is 3. Well, who cares? Don't say 1 plus 1 is 3. You can just drop it off. Just say my name is Mark. Because an or false doesn't do anything. Right? It just leaves it alone. And so that's the idea of being able to toss out a truth or toss out a false. It depends on what it's with. On the other hand, 
we have domination for each of these. If on the other hand I would do a P and false, that dominates. It completely destroys a proposition and it just spits out the false. If I have P or true, that completely dominates. It throws away the proposition in its entirety and leaves the truth. So I can do things like, for example, my name is Mark and one plus one is two. Well, that's just false. The entire thing gets tossed out and just is replaced with a false. My name is Mark or, sorry, did I say one plus one is two? I should have said three. My name is Mark and one plus one is three, which is false. So this gets knocked out and it's just left with false. My name is Mark or one plus one is two, which is true. So who cares what you just said? I don't even have to know what its truth values are. It could be true or false. It doesn't matter. This true dominates. So ir irregardless. And so it's kind of interesting. And's do nothing is true, but or's dominator is true. Or's do nothing is false, but or and's dominator is false. So they're flip sides of one another. And we have to know how to work with such things. And so we have those. Um, we have the identity, the domination. We also have the idempotent laws, which is a variation. Like a lot of times you'll say things like, you know, x plus x is 2x or x times x is x squared. Well, under logic, it's different. If I would have p and p, I don't have two propositions. If my name is Mark and my name is Mark, you just say it once. It's idempotent is the say it once laws. Hey, look, my name is Mark and my name is Mark. Just say it once. My name is Mark or my name is Mark. Uh, just say it once. There isn't any combiner here. It's just, just say it once laws. It's different than, and so here's where people get confused sometimes as they are in a mindset of elementary algebra. We are not in that. Strictly speaking, logic is a form of a Boolean algebra, but in the end, we just need to memorize how they actually work. What can you replace with? If you have something repeated, write it once. If you have something repeated, write it once under the and and the or. So these are strictly to these two operators. We have double negation. The double negation law is it's not the case that it's not the case that I said something, uh, just say it, right? If you flip the truth values and then you flip the truth values back, you're back to the original thing. And so this is kind of like make a liar lie about his lie and then you just get the original values of the object. Uh, we have the commutative laws, which is that P and Q is the same thing as Q and P, and P or Q is the same thing as Q or P. People look at the flipping of it, not all operators, you know, even in the past that you're used to are commutative. Addition is one plus two is two plus three, but subtraction is not. 1 minus 2 is not the same thing as 2 minus 1. And so not everything is commutative. It happens to be that and and or are both commutative. Uh, the associative laws. The associative laws is, let's say we have and three times with, I mean, two ands for three objects. Now, because and only works with two objects, I'm going to have to use parentheses. So, if I would first and the Q and the R, find the answer, and then and that with P, it ends up being that this is the same thing as P and Q, and then and R. So it doesn't, really what you're saying is, if everybody's and, the order doesn't matter. If everything is or, again, order doesn't matter. What's nice about this is the and and the or with commutative and associative laws put together, allows a lot of freedom that as I write things. If everything is and and everything is order, or it doesn't matter, you can just completely rearrange things. So if you had things like one plus two plus three, you could say, oh, I'm gonna take the one and three and get four, add the two and I get a six. I could have done the one and two and it's three, and three and three is six. It doesn't matter how you do that. Um, you can rearrange the order however you want. That's the same thing here. It simply says if you have all ands, all ors, you can associate and commute all you want to the freedom to be able to simplify your problem. After that, we have all the forms of distribution forms. Okay, the first distribution form we've already done, which was this whole not 
P or Q is the same thing as not P and not Q. It looks like the, it, the negation has distributed through. And if I had not P and Q, I could show that that's the same thing as a not P or not Q. And so these two distribution forms, since they're special enough, they get their own name. These are called De Morgan's Laws. So as if negation goes through, it negates both sides and the and, ors become ands and the ands become ors. One of the features of this as well under, you could imagine again, if I would go the other direction, you might use the word like I have factored out the negation. And if you take a negate from both, it'll flip your or into an and or an and into an or. So normally we might use words like factor out, but they're both using the same thing. They're using a distributive form. This way we tend to use the word distribute. This way we do tend to use the word factor. It doesn't matter. They're both the same law. It doesn't matter if you go left or right or right to left. Other ones that are strictly distributive laws would be things like, well, what if I mixed P or Q and R? Well, now this is op these are mixed operators. Well, this will distribute. This will become P or Q and it'll become P or R, and then we had that middle and. Well, what if I had P and Q or R? Well, this again will distribute. This will be P and Q. This will be P and R, and the middle operator of or, the middle operators of the ands stays. So what happens is this distributes through this, distributes throughs and we leave our middle operator as it goes through. So it's a, again, it's a form of distribution. Um, what about implication? Now, one of the things that happens is some people might ask, well, what if I had the P on the other side? What if I had this Q and R and I did an OR P? Well, you could say, okay, this is gonna distribute from the right, but in the end, it doesn't matter. Why? Because we have commutativity. Because or is commutative, the P can come in front and we just, so we don't have a left distributive, right distributive, it doesn't matter. On the other hand, there are other operators like implication. So if I would have something like, what happens if I have P imply Q and R? And I have a left side distribution, I'm gonna also have to look at a right side distribution. What if I would flip it around so that the imply was over here well, then it's going to have to go from the right. And the reason why is this is not commutative. You can't just simply turn those two around. And so how does this work? This is P implies Q. This is P implies R. And the AND stays alone. If this is implies Q or R, this is logically P implies Q. This is P implies R, and that stays an OR. So we still have the same idea of distribution. It's like, oh, look, that's nice and pretty. But on the other hand, if I flip it around, say I did a P and Q implies R, or I did a P or Q implies R, again, we still have the implication. So P implies R, so the implies R is coming on the right. The Q implies R is coming on the right. The P implies R is coming on the right. The Q implies R is coming on the right. But the conjunction becomes disjunction and the disjunction becomes conjunction. So if they're on the right hand side, what's going to happen here is as they distribute through, ands become ors and ors become ands. And so it flips somewhat like De Morgan's Law as you do this. And so all of these are essentially distributions. We have to understand if you go one way, you would say, oh, look, I distributed. If we go the other way, it's still distribution, but we might use the word factoring. And so again, boy, isn't that nice? And <laughs> in elementary algebra, you have one distribution. Uh, we have a lot in logic, and we have to know how each of these work. So we've got distribution. Uh, we have De Morgan's. Uh, one additional law would be absorption, which would be that if you have P or P and Q, that's just simply the same as saying P. If I have P and P or Q, I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> P or Q, that's also the same as P. So what happens is the Q gets absorbed in because it doesn't actually contribute anything. P and Q is asking when both of them 
work together. And if I OR that with P, you just get P right back out. If I try to ask P or Q, which makes it bigger than P, but then I ask, I have to strictly ask when it works with P, it's the same thing as doing just P by itself. So we've got the distributive forms, all of these, and now we have some more. So we could have some laws with more laws. We'll say implication and biconditional, uh, some very important ones. Uh, P implies Q is logically same as not P or Q. This is called the disjunctive form of implication. So you'd have, if my name is Mark, then I'm teaching this class. is logically the same as saying I'm not Mark or I'm teaching this class. And so you could show that these are truth tables. So this is a very important one that we use a lot. Um, this is also important when we talk about the idea of the word unless. And so when I look at this, this has been seen before, this whole not P or Q. If I would use, okay, not P or Q, that's obviously logically the same thing as Q or not P. And a lot of times this was said as Q unless not P. And so Q unless not P before was a verbal definition of P implies Q. And it's a variant of the word or. So unless is a variant of the word or. And normally when we would use this strictly speaking, if I would use this as saying that I have a square unless triangle, that simply means as an operator of this is actually the not triangle implies the square, but that is logically the same thing as the triangle or <laughs> the square. So when we look at this is <laughs> working through these and so that's that word unless being this particular or gets to yes it's, it's an or of an emphasis but normally what it's emphasizing is the negation feature of the left hand side of an implication and that's how we work these particular things out so it's an important one to worry about when you're saying unless and how this works for this particular logical version as you go through these problems and how they all flow uh, a second one that's actually very important for implication is P implies Q is logically the same thing as not Q implies not P. This should look familiar when we talked about the inverse when you the book writ, wrote down names for inverse, converse, and contrapositive. This is saying that essentially an implication is logically the same as its own contrapositive. It's also true that the in the same way the if a implication is the same as its contrapositive the in, the inverse is the same as its converse on those particular things but normally we just use the contrapositive rather than the inverse and the converse being the same logically as well so a normal implication is logically the same as its contrapositive is the normal way that we look at this I, another version that's important is if we would negate an implication well, that would be the same thing as if I would use this guy right here. That's negating not P or Q, because that's what implication is. But then I can use distribution, De Morgan's law, so that's not not P and not Q. And then I could use the double negation, which is the same thing as P and not Q. So that's telling me that. So if you want to negate an implication, it's the same thing as taking the original and not the second part. So if this would be like hypothesis conclusion, if I have a hypothesis that needs to imply a conclusion, if I don't have that, if I do not have the hypothesis implies conclusion, what that means is logically the same as having the hypothesis and not having the conclusion. That's what that is working out to be. So that's huge as well in understanding implications. So we need to know that as well. Now with the double, sorry, the biconditionals, we have P if and only if Q is logically the same thing as P implies Q. 
and Q implies P. This definitely points out why we use the word if and only if. Hey, look, P if and only if Q. Hey, look, Q is on the right. That's the only if. Q is on the left. That's the if. <laughs> so P if and only if Q, if and only and only if. And so it's on both sides, and that's why we say if and only if, and that's the implication. You could also write this as P if and only if Q is the same as not P if and only if not Q. So if P and Q have the same truth values, not P and not Q have the same truth values. On the other hand, if it's not true that P and Q have the same truth values, what that means is P has the same tr truth values, has the opposite values of Q. So if we look at that, by conditional means same truth values. If that's not true, that would have to mean that one of them has the opposite values of the other, which means that the opposite and the original of the other have the same truth values. And so that'd be a discussion version of showing that logical equivalency. So these are, we have to know all the above. Not necessarily always the names, but we have to know them. Why? That's what we'll do next. <laughs> and the reason why is because we're going to use them. We either use them for the reasons of uh, taking a sentence and turning it into a new sentence. So, for example, you would have things like uh, going through particular problems and we would go through it and use P implies Q to restate a sentence. So it would be the idea of going back to the bear problem where it's like, you know what, I didn't see any bears and I didn't see any berries. Well, I can shorten that. I, can say, I didn't see bears or berries. Shorter. I just simply restated the sentence. They mean the exact same thing. It's just the Morgan's Law. And so it allows us to be able to restate things in, some, in a form of verbal simplification to be able to understand what did you just say? Could you tell it to me in a better way, in a way that is logically the same, but makes more intuitive sense? I mean, it's, it's the same thing as like when you have an algebra problem and it looks horrible, like, you know, 2x squared plus 3x is equal to 7x minus 20. And you do something like this and you do all this work and then you try to find like x is equal to two solutions and it's like boy I, I like my two solutions better than my original problem the answer is yes because I see what the answer is it, it it makes sense to me we do the same thing with verbal reasoning we could have a really messy dis, you know a complicated compound proposition or several of them as a system and we would like okay let's let's restate this and think about it with logically the same things that are more efficient or easier to think about. And so just like we do with college algebra, we're going to do here, but we're doing it with human language and obviously moving back and forth between between symbols. And so we'll use them to restate sentences. We will use logical equivalencies to simplify. And a lot of times we just want to, you know, find things that are logically equivalent, which which means things like, am I going to use truth tables? Well, I should be able to do it. Does it mean to do a discussion of some sort? Well, I should be able to do it. And so we would do all of these particular things. And so the next thing I'll do is actually do some examples for us.